Hi everybody and welcome to the Microsoft Fabric UK user group for our first community event of 2024. Bragati, Happy New Year. I'm sure you've heard this plenty over the last 11 days, but Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year, Leon, and I'm quite excited because this is like the kickoff session for our user group today for 2024. And we have got an amazing guest and speaker with us today. It is. We did mention uh, back in 2023, I'm saying it like it's a long time ago. It's not that long ago. Uh, we did mention back in 2023 that we were preparing for a fantastic year of content um, for you. And we're starting this in the best way. So as always, please do let us know where you're joining us from around the world. And I think, Pragati, um, let's not have much small talk today. Should we just get into an introduction and get yeah. going? Yeah, definitely. Oh, fantastic. So today's um, session is actually going to be regarding professional developer experiences in Power BI with Hui Romano. Now, Hui is an experienced Microsoft professional with a deep passion for data and analytics. He has spent the last decade helping companies make better data-driven decisions and is known for his innovative and practical solutions to complex problems. And he currently works as a product manager uh, as part of the Power BI product team. Now, we did mention to Hui just before I do bring him on screen, we actually last had him with us back in January 2022, so nearly two years to the date. So, Hui, thank you very, very much um, for joining us again. Thank you. Thank you for having me, and uh, it's good to be back. <laughs> Excellent. We're very, very much looking forward to today's session. So with that being said, we're happy to hand um, directly over to you. If you can share your screen, then we can um, disappear into the background. Yep. Please just let me know if uh, you are seeing it. Absolutely. Let me do some jigging around and Hui will hand over to you. Okay. So uh, one more time, I'm really excited to be here. Thank you for, for having me. Uh, my name is Hui. Uh, I'm a product manager on the Power BI team uh, and uh, more specifically, in the Pro BI team, uh, where my team focus is to, uh, I usually say to bring those uh, developer experiences, more Pro BI experiences into Power BI. Uh, don't get mistaken that Power BI will, it still is, and it will always be uh, a tool focused on self-service. But what my team is doing and what we, what we want to do is to also want, we want to also bring functionality that is, uh, needed for the for the for the professionals so things like source control uh, so things like formats and code first formats like with the tindle that will let you develop your models and even the future reports uh with uh with uh with code editors for example uh and also have co proper co-development and team co-development uh, and th th that will be the focus of, uh, of, uh, of my presentation, although there are plenty of other features uh, that, that, that uh, my team is responsible for. For example, the model explorer that finally you can create calculation groups in, uh, in, in Power BI Desktop. Uh, and you can also have a simplified view of your model organized by measures and, 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 and object types. Um, and um, and also the amazing DAX query view that now you can write DAX queries inside of Power BI Desktop uh, to troubleshoot performance that can easily, you can go to a visual and get the query of the visual and troubleshoot that query and run that query. Uh, so, so those types of experiences that they were available in Power BI, but either through external tools uh, or some advanced techniques. So we want to bring those experiences into natively supported, uh, to be natively supported by, the, by, by our tools and our platform. Uh, so as I said, so I will focus on the, on the developer mode uh, and, uh, and the Power BI uh, and, and source control and CI, CD and APIs. So that's my focus of the presentation today. Uh, so let's start with the, with the developer mode and what it is. Uh, so. It's, it's really just a save as type, a new save as type that uh, instead of uh, when you work in Power BI Desktop, instead of working in a single PBIX file, that is a binary file, which is great if you are a self-service user and you want to share that file and put it in OneDrive and share it through email, but it's not so great if you work on a team 
Uh, and if, if you want to have a, a, a co-development experience where one user is working on the data set on the semantic model. So I need, I'm also training myself uh, that on that new name. So uh, I, I will try to say as, my, as much as I can semantic model, uh, but sometimes you will see data set. So data set and semantic model is the same thing. Um, so, but but if you are working on a team, you might want you might you might have one one person working on the semantic model, another person working on the report, and even or maybe two developers working or two users working on the same on the semantic model, and one working on a, one table and another working on a measure, and the same thing on the report, uh, one working on bookmarks, another one working on the on the on the report pages. So. Um, the developer mode, and when you save as a Power BI project, you save to a folder, and when you save to a folder, you get uh, a metadata. Uh, so, uh, for example, you get a folder like this one, where you have one folder for the data set, one folder for the report, and inside of these folders, uh, uh, you get uh, a representation of the semantic model where, for example, for the, for the semantic model, the most important file is this model.bim, which is a, a a JSON file that has all the, the, uh, the it has a development and the representation of the definition of the of the of the semantic model. So it will have things like all the tables, all the measures will be in here. And we also split the data from the definition. So uh, the data will actually be in this folder over here with a binary file that should not go into source control. So because you have a folder like this with metadata. Uh, you can use uh, source control tools like Git uh, to back up your work and, and also enable and then uh, 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 remote Git like uh, DevOps or GitHub to enable uh, code development. Okay, and you can learn more about this in, in this link, uh, aka.ms pbi desktop dev mode. Uh, I'm not going to deep dive on, <coughs> on a lot of the basics of dev mode <coughs> since it's, 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 uh, we, we already shipped this six months ago, uh, but, uh, but uh, I still want to do a, a, a quick introduction. Uh, then we have the Fabric Kit integration. And the Fabric Kit integration is uh, basically connecting, allowing you to connect your workspaces in Fabric to a Git repo. And then it will be the Fabric responsibility to synchronize between the what exists in the workspace and what exists in the repo. And what this allows you to do is, is basically it allows you to, uh, to have like multiple developers, some of the developers working on desktop, some of the de developers working in the browser directly from the workspace, but they will all share the metadata, the, the, sort, the, the metadata truth of the, 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 the development. So they will all share the same code base because the workspace will be constantly synchronizing to, to Git and also the the your the, the local machines, so the local developers using desktop, they will also synchronize to the to the to the Git host. That in this case, it's Git. Uh, uh, at this moment, it only supports Azure DevOps, but GitHub it, it's also going to be supported in the future. Uh, but the Git integration is responsible to making that synchronization. Uh, and once you do that, this this also allows it. it, it this also allows you to make changes in the workspace and then synchronize those changes to the work to, 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 to the to the to the git repo and then another developer uh, or even yourself you can continue those developments in desktop uh, so this stops that bad practice of making changes directly in the service now it doesn't matter you can make changes in the service and you know that those changes will be synchronized to the to the to the git repo that is, that will be in azure devops so very quickly, I will just play uh, a recording uh, of an end-to-end -end demo, uh, and I will talk through the I will talk through the demo. Okay, let me just play this. I usually like, prefer to play this in the in stream because in the PowerPoint, if I click on the wrong place, it will start again. So. <laughs> it all starts with Power BI Desktop. So you have your PBIX, you have your uh, uh, Power BI development, and you are saving to a PBIX. And now you want to move into developer mode. What, what you do? So, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, you go to File, Save As, and in here you will find a new option that it's called the uh, PBIP. 
And when you save as a PBIP, instead of saving as a single file, you will get that folder I was talking about. So you get that folder with the data set and the report uh, folders in it. And, uh, and inside of each folder, you have a bunch of files with some metadata, some files more important than the others, but let's, let's, let's just keep it like, uh, as is. And then after you, you have that folder, uh, you can uh, bring a source control experience. So you initialize, you can initialize uh, your Git repo. And for that, you need to use an external tool. Uh, there are plenty of them. Uh, you can use VS Code. My, our, my recommendation is, <laughs> is to use VS Code because it's a, it's a, a free Microsoft tool. Uh, so where you initialize your, your Git repo, and um, after you initialize that Git repo, now you get an amazing thing that now every change that you do in desktop, so I'm going to uh, change uh, uh, a visual measure, and I'm also going to make a, a DAX change, uh, and I save. Now every change that I do will be tracked by the by by Git. So and I can not only I can see the changes, I can see the file that that was changed, and I can see what was the the the, the change. So I can see that in term for DAX, uh, it, it was a change on this measure, and this was the old version, and this was the new version. So this means that another thing that you gain on using the, the Power BI developer mode and the BBIP and Git is that everything that you do will be tracked so you can back up. So you can easily and natively do things like, I want to move to last, last week version, to yesterday version. So you don't need to be saving those multiple versions of the PBIX file. Uh, and the same thing for the report. And yes, I know, I know this, this file is ugly. It's not, it's not very good for uh, code development and source control. But uh, stay with me. I'm going to show you what we, what we, uh, what uh, great enhancements that we have. This, but, but still, it's a JSON file, and still you can still understand what was the, what was the changes. So uh, you do, a, you do a commit. You can, you can uh, make the changes. Uh, you can track those changes. You can even make changes like, okay, I want to change the theme file of my report, uh, or I want to change a logo of my report. So uh, when you save the report definition, it has that report.json, but it also has so every image will be on a, on a special folder uh, called static resources and registered resources. So if you want to swap a logo, if you want to change the theme file, you, you just need to swap this file, just need to change this file, and you will be good with it. So uh, um, I'm, I'm changing the logo. And I'm also going to open that. Uh, I'm going to change from a light mode to a dark mode. And, um, and you might be thinking, hey, this guy is crazy. Why, why you don't do it in the tool? It's much faster. So in the tool, you can actually delete the image and, uh, and, uh, and, and swap the image. Or, and you can even go to the view and swap the theme. You can do that in 10 seconds or one minute. The, the thing is. In the PBIP world, in the developer mode world, if you want to do this for one report, then sure, do it, do it in the tool. But if you want to do this for 100 reports, then I can tell you that doing this in the PBIX and doing this by hand, it will take you many hours. If you do this in the PBIP, if you already have your source control representation of your PBIX, you can do it in the script. You can just copy and paste the files and you are done. Uh, and you can do that in a fraction of the time. So the reason why I'm, I'm showing you this is, is that when you when you save as a PVIP, yes, it's more advanced. Yes, you need to learn about Git. Yes, you need to. Uh, uh, it's not just a file; it's a collection of files. But at the same time, you control the metadata. You have access to the metadata. You can uh, learn what the tool is doing. And whenever there is a daunting task, some task that uh, you will need, uh, you it's it's very repetitive. So that is something that I uh, I learned very in the early stages of the computer science is everything that, whenever I do something like I'm repeating the same task 10, 10 times per day I try to automate and this is what will let you to do so the PBIP and the developer mode if you have a task that you are repeating 10 times or 20 times every single day you can stop and you can think hey I'm doing something wrong so 
I can automate this stuff. And now we are letting you do that because you, you have access to the metadata and you can uh, uh, script uh, uh, tasks that are, are repetitive. Okay. Uh, so as you can see, so this is, uh, I, I just swapped by, uh, and, and another thing, another detail. So desktop, it's not aware today, this, I'm sure that this will change in the future, but today it's not aware from changes outside of desktop. So if there is a change outside of desktop, like this one, I swapped the logo, I swapped the theme file, you need to restart desktop, okay? <laughs> just have that in mind. So whenever, whenever you make changes, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm still recovering from a cold. Uh, whenever you, you make changes outside of desktop, uh, desktop is not aware about those changes. So if you save in desktop, it will overwrite those changes. So you need to, my recommendation is if you want to do changes uh, on the metadata, close Power BI desktop, make the changes and, and uh, uh, reopen it. Okay, so, and, uh, and now let's, I want to deploy this. So I have my PVIP, I want to deploy this. How can you do that? You have two options. Option one is the same old publish button. You can click on the publish and Power BI Desktop will take care of publishing that PVIP. Another option is using the Fabric in integration uh, that, that, that I was talking about. And for that, you need to use a Azure DevOps one more time. Today's Azure DevOps, DevOps, tomorrow we will support GitHub. Uh, so we create a new repo, and I'm going to do that from scratch. So I create a new repo. Uh, you, I can, I copy, and there are many ways to do this. What I'm doing now, uh, this is one way of doing it. You can clone it, and then you can save to that clone folder. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, copy that remote uh, location, and uh, I go to VS Code, and um, and uh, I configure that remote location in the VS Code. Uh, and uh, once I do that, I can uh, publish this branch. So I can, I'm, I'm, now <coughs> I'm now publishing my local branch, my local Git into my remote uh, uh, Git location. Uh, and uh, once I do that, I'm uh, 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 so I have my, my files in my DevOps and, I, and now I can connect my workspace by going to the workspace settings. And that is a new setting there called Git integration. And I can connect this workspace to the, to the Azure DevOps project. So I need to select the project, the Git repo and the branch. And, uh, and once I do that, then I click connect and sync. Fabric will take care of synchronizing the items that exist in the, in the repo to the workspace. Uh, have in mind that there is no data, only metadata. So if you have a report, that report will be like this. So you need to refresh your semantic model. And after you do the refresh, then the report will start working. And this is a bi-directional uh, connection. And by bi-directional, I mean that if I make a change in the workspace or I create a new uh, report um, like this one, then, I, I'm going to have an output change, uh, an export change. So basically, now I have, a, a, and uh, in my workspace, I have a, a, a new item, this one, and it's saying that okay, this is uncommitted. I need to, uh, uh, I need, to, uh, it's already working. It's a report working in the workspace, but the, it's not in the source control. So I need to go to the source control banner uh, uh, button, and I click it, and I, uh, I can commit this new report to my uh, to my uh, devops and uh, once and now it's it's in devops so this means that i can uh, uh, pull i can get this change in my desktop environment and i can continue the development uh, or another developer can take that change um, and uh, and i do a git pull in vs code and i have my new reports so if you noticed and this is another important detail because this is the most traditional flow. So I save a PBIP I want to publish. Now, another flow, you might say, okay, I want to convert. Uh, is there any way for me to convert uh, 100 PBIX files to PBIP? No, there are no APIs to do that. But one thing, one way you can do it is you can upload those 100 PBIX files into a workspace, and then you connect that workspace into Git, and then you get the PBIP representation of those PBIX files, because the export into Git is always with the PBIP file format. 
So as you can see, that report that I created in the service, it's exported not as a PVIX into Git, but as a PVIP. So I get that at report.json and a bunch of other files uh, from my uh, 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 that represent my PVIP file. So and, uh, and and the nice thing about it is that now I have my definition, and of course I can open it back in Power BI Desktop, and I can continue that development of that report that uh, was created in the service in desktop. This also means, and there are a couple of uh, community blog posts out there about this, that if you have a report that you cannot download as a PVIX, this is a good way to get back into Power BI Desktop. So you export to a PVIP uh, to Git, and then you open it back in, in Power BI Desktop. If, and if you want, you can save it back as a PVIX because you can go, you can convert the PVIX to a PVIP, and you can also convert a, a, a PVIP to a PVIX. Okay. And I'll stop in a minute for questions, but let me just uh, uh, go through, uh, to go to the slides again. Uh, so, why should you care about this? Why, why the developer mode is important? Why, why this, why this, why, why should you, why should you care? So, I will give you a couple of, uh, of reasons. The first one is uh, you, whenever you, you, you have, you, you save as a PVIP, and you learn about Git. Yes, you need to learn about Git. You need to understand what the Git is. Uh, to get it, to to get the advantages that I'm talking about, the first thing is you 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 will be able to track and backup all of your developments. And believe me, you want to do this sooner than rather than later, because this is the type of stuff that one more time you don't need to be worried about making changes. You can make the changes you want. You can you can make. A, uh, that is a, a requirement for you to change a measure. It change it. You don't need to be worrying. Oh, let's. Uh, I will save it because maybe my change will be wrong and I want to revert. Whenever you are you are in the PVIP world in the Git world, you make the changes. You do the commit, and then you can track natively and without doing anything. You can track all those changes. Okay. So you can you have the time. You even have if you have more than one developer. Who was the, the person making the change? So, and this is a huge, huge advantage. Uh, it's, it's just this for me. It's worth uh, the investment on learning about the PBIP and the Git integration. <laughs> Second, finally, proper co and professional co development. So, you have a remote Git, and you can have two developers working on the same project, and it will be the Git responsibility to manage the conflicts if there are any conflicts, because if there are no conflicts, then each developer is just pushing, pulling the changes of, of, of each other. Then you can also adopt some professional development uh, techniques with branching. And in here, this is where things start to become a, a lot more complex. And there are many ways to do it. I think that you should find whatever the strategy and the branching. First, you need to learn about kits. And second, you need to learn about branching. And when you learn about branching, you need to adopt a strategy. And there are plenty of those. These are the most, the common, the, 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 the let's say the top four. Uh, and, and, and to be honest, I don't think that there is right and wrong. Uh, so the most common one is probably the Git flow. We also have the Microsoft release flow, the feature branching, but the simple, the, the simple one is just a trunk. You just have a, a single branch and you make changes and you deploy from that single branch. You should choose the one that will work the best for your team. Okay, so you should research about this and <coughs> whatever the, 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 the branching uh, strategy you want to use, you should adopt that. But this, you, to do this, you need to, you need to be in the PVIP world. You need to be in developer mode. Uh, so, uh, but basically, the one that I, I see more 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 often is actually it's just, just the feature, the feature uh, branching where you have the main branch and whenever a developer wants to do something like create a new measure, it creates a feature. It works on isolation uh, on an isolated branch, and whenever it's ready, it do, it does a pull request to the main branch. Okay, uh, and. This will also let you have a, 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 a CI a, adopt CI/CD patterns, and this will this is where things start to really pay off. Also, it's it's complex. Someone needs to manage this, but whenever you go in this world, to, whenever you adopt this, this will improve 
significantly not only the quality but also the reliability of your analytics projects because and, and there are a couple of ways to do this so one is the, the first diagram on the top where uh, you have uh, it, you can you can do this in DevOps and also in Gita, but basically you have a, a, a build pipeline that whenever a developer makes a change, it will validate that change automatically. So it will make sure that that developer is not going, regardless of the experience of that developer, if it is a senior or a junior, it will make sure that the developer is not going to commit basic mistakes. And believe me, I do mistakes all, every day, even though I have like 16 or 70 years of experience, I do mistakes every day. So uh, uh just just the ease of mind just the ease of mind that you have something that whenever you push something you want to deploy something to production will validate those basic mistakes it's it's uh, 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 uh it's it's worth it it's 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 amazing uh, and basic mistakes could be something like uh, and you can inspect because you are saving as a pvip you have the metadata you can inspect the metadata so you can do things like uh uh uh, am I, is my report using non-theme colors? So my report has a theme and I'm, I'm not using a theme color. So that's something that should break the build. So the developer should not deploy that. Or is my uh, semantic model is using measures with a fully qualified name? That's a bad practice. I should, uh, I should be blocked and I should not be able to deploy that. And my favorite one on the semantic model, do I have a column in my semantic model that is hidden? It's not used on measures. It's not used on summarize by. It's not using on sort by. It's not used anywhere. But it's still there because the developer think that that column might be needed later. That should not happen. You should block that because if that column is needed later, then you add that column later. Uh, it's 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 way worse when you publish a model with a column that you you think it might be needed and then you don't know in the future that if someone is using that because it got out of control you have excels connecting to the model uh, and maybe the users learn how to to show hidden columns so you want to you don't want to break stuff so the build pipeline will take care of validating and ensuring that your development it's up to the, the quality bar of your team and guess what you can also customize the rules of those uh, of those build pipelines Using and in here you need to use some external tools to do that. Uh, I, I have a demo about this, uh, and that is a tutorial in our documentation uh, that shows you how, how you can do this really easy. Uh, and then you have the so this is the continuous integration, and then you have the deployment. And for that, you can either use uh, uh, the fabric deploy deployment pipelines to deploy to the multiple workspaces. That is the the uh, what I call the the more lot like, citizen developer. Uh, CI CD experience in Fabric. So it's really easy. You just configure the, the, the workspaces, one workspace for each environment. You can, you can have rules to, uh, to change things between the workspaces. And you can even have, if you want, uh, maybe no one has access to the deployment pipelines and you want to have some uh, uh, approval workflows in the middle. You can even have DevOps triggering uh, and, uh, and starting those deployment pipelines automatically. Or, and this is the bottom one, the, this diagram here on the bottom. So you have the, exactly the same thing. I was talking about the build pipelines, but now you have you, you, you maybe you are in a, in, a, in a situation where the Git integration is not enough for you, uh, or the fabric deployment pipeline is not enough for you. You want to control the full process. If you want to do that, you can do that today, uh, because there are a new set of APIs that we shipped in December. And this new set of APIs is what will let you have a deployment pipeline. And you can have, like, for example, Git flow with release branches where whenever you, you create a release branch, it will trigger the deployment pipeline. And that deployment pipeline will take care of deploying to the workspaces that you want. So you can easily do things like, I want to deploy the same report and the same data set 100 times with different configurations. I want to have a dev, test, and prod. Uh, uh, branch, uh, and I want to make sure that whenever I publish from the dev branch, it's going to the dev workspaces with the dev connections. So the APIs let you have full control on how to deploy uh, to, to your workspaces without being limited to the one-to-one -one mapping uh, of the Fabricate integration. So I usually say that 
the fabricate integration, it's for 80%, 90% of the scenarios. In here, if you do, uh, if you if you are uh, if you are in a really highly professional team and you want to automate and, and and control the, the the whole process, now you can do that with the Fabric APIs. Um, and uh, before stopping for questions, let, let's just go to the to the what what is coming, and then and then I'll stop for questions because some of the questions maybe is is related are, are related to the to the new formats. So there are two things that I'm really excited about, and those are the biggest priorities right now for the developer mode and the Power BI project. So the first one is uh, the semantic model format. So today, we, we, when you save as a PBIP, you get a single file uh, using a format called TIMSL, Tableau Model Scripting Language, uh, which looks like this, where it's a JSON file, which is fine. It's a publicly documented file. It exists for a long time, uh, even before Power BI. I think that, yeah, this was shipped in a, an analysis services uh, tabler. Um, and, um, and it's JSON. And because it's JSON, and one thing that a semantic model has is it has languages inside that, that, that JSON, like the M expressions and the DAX. Those are languages that live inside of, uh, of, uh, of the semantic model. So, and to represent those languages in TeamSol, that's difficult because it's JSON. So in JSON does not like multi-line strings. So what we, what we do is we repre represent it like this when we need to, we to escape the, every line uh, and we need to, we need to escape the M expression. So it's not, you, can, you cannot easily edit this file and you cannot e edit this M expression, and you cannot easily copy and paste this M expression between the semantic models. Uh, and another problem of TeamSol is that it's just a single file. <coughs> and because it's a single file, yes, it's JSON, and the code development will work, but it, it, it's not going to have a, a, a very good uh, experience whenever you have two developers working on the same file. The conflicts might be harder to manage because at least you, if you, even if you have two developers working on different tables, they are both changing the same file. So with Tindall, the tabular model definition language, we want to change. We are we change that. So it, it was a, 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 a language, a format that it was this designed from scratch. Uh, it was designed mainly for human interactivity to to be able to, for for the anyone to easily read and understand. Uh, what part of the semantic model they are looking at, and also to make it really easy to to, to edit the, the 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 semantic model properties. Like if you want to edit the DAX or or the M expression, you can just copy and paste. Uh, and as you can see on the right, uh, that is no escaping. So the only thing that that we we require to do is to have some proper indentation. So the expression needs to be. One level of indentation uh, over the uh, over the the, the, the properties, uh, but you can do copy paste. You can actually open this and you can make DAX query changes directly to the file. Uh, really, really easy. Uh, and another thing uh, that actually one of my favorite features of of the Tindall is that things like collections, like the in in the semantic model, you have a collection of columns, you have a collection of measures. Uh, they are represented, so you don't need to for example, when you look into Tinsel, uh, if you look, uh, uh, if you have more than one measure, like this one, in here I just have one visible. But let's say you have, I have multiple, so I have multiple sections of this. When you are, if you have like 100 measures and you are in the middle, you you really need to understand this the semantic model properties to know that this is a measure. In Tindall, you don't have that problem because every collection, you don't have that the, the situation where the measures are inside of a measures uh, property. Uh, you you just declare like is is in here, so you just declare measure that is the object type and then the object name and then that's the expression. And if you have another measure, you can just copy and paste this. And while when you are looking into this, uh, for each let's say each column or each measure, you know that this is a column because it's, it's uh, uh, for each, each, each section, it has a declaration of the object type. <laughs> and, um, and last and, and really important, it's by default, 
it's collaborative. So by default, instead of saving uh, to a single file, we are saving to a folder where each uh, table has an individual file. So whenever you, you when, when you bring source control and Git uh, and you have multiple developers working on the same model, uh, if they are working on different tables, they don't even get a conflict because this is going to be uh, changes on different files. If they are working on the same table, that conflict will be easier to solve because you don't have that JSON and the open and square brackets. It will just be a section. So if it is a new column, you'll just see, see that new section of that new column. <coughs> and uh, and uh, 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 Tindall, we do have a... a, a, a a lot, a lot of ambition and uh, 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 about Tindall because we look at Tindall as a code-first modeling experience, and uh, this means that we want to make it easy for you to just open a code editor and author a semantic model just using Tindall. And uh, and um, and why should you? Why you want to do that? You want to do that if you are professional enough and if you want to have a fast experience into modeling because you don't have a, a, a tool like Power BI Desktop that takes some time to load and it prepares the data. So, so to do some uh, 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 small changes, it, it might be a lot more efficient to do that directly on the code files. And for that, in VS Code, and it's already available today, there is a language extension called Tindall you can install. And today that language extension will bring you, will give you syntax highlighting, which is great. But we don't want to stop here. Uh, so we, we want to have on this language extension, we want to have things like IntelliSense. We want to have uh, 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 IntelliSense for the languages. So whenever you are editing and unauthoring a Power Query expression, you get IntelliSense on that Power Query. If you are unauthoring a DAX, you get the IntelliSense for DAX. Uh, you get IntelliSense for the available properties. Uh, we want to do refactoring. So you go to a model and you do a rename, and that thing you will will re, 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 let's say you rename a. a, a um, a column and that rename of the column will uh, affect the perspective table. So we want to bring uh, 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 a proper code first experience into the VS Code. Uh, and why not? Maybe in the future also into uh, Power BI Desktop. So if you like that, please please uh, vote for an idea uh, in, in fabricideas.com. Uh, and this is the 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 the, the semantic model. Uh, a little bit about timelines. This is going to ship really really soon. Uh, hopefully in the next uh, in the next couple of months. Uh, and uh, and then let's talk about the report. And this one is going to take a little bit more uh, more time. Uh, so it's not going to ship in, in the next couple of months. So it might take a, a few extra months to to be public. But uh, we we will change the file format of the report. And we will change it to something that it's not this. It's not a, a JSON with encoded JSON strings where if you have two developers working on the same report, you get conflicts that you cannot solve. We want to have a source control friendly format. It will still be JSON. Uh, it's not yet a Tyndall like YAML like syntax, maybe in the future, but for now it will still be JSON, but it will be proper formatted JSON like this one. Uh, it's a sim it's this it's it's a very similar JSON to what you have today. If you look uh, into this encoded JSON strings, it will have more or less the same properties. But we also took the opportunity to simplify some things. We are removing some uh, some properties that were not required on the report definition. Uh, we will also truncate and things like in the, the 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 visual position, not having decimals with uh, with 20, 20 decimal places. Um, and another thing, you will have a schema, and the schema because for and this will be on the file, so this will make it possible. And this will be a publicly documented schema. When you open the file format, when you open the JSON file, let's say in VS Code, you will get automatic IntelliSense. You will get automatic validations. You can make changes, and those changes you'll get highlighted if you uh, assign it the wrong value you will understand, okay, what values are available. Uh, so this means that for the first time ever, 
we are going to make the report as a publicly documented format. This also means that you can make changes to that file format outside of Power BI Desktop. This also means that you can be a lot more efficient because now uh, if you have a, a task in the report, and I'm sure that a lot of you have done situations with things like uh, you have a report with 20 pages and you want to hide the visual level filter, filters of every single visual. And to do that manually, it's it's painful. And I'm sure that Power BI Desktop won't have uh, batch uh, editings for everything. It might have for a few things, but not for everything. And this is <clears throat> what's going to make it possible for you to learn what desktop is doing and then automate that and make a, a script or, or even just go to the files and to do some find, a, find and replace and make the changes and desktop will be okay with it because it's going to be publicly documented. And second, and the last, it, it will also have a folder structure. So it will, it will be co-development and, and source control friendly. Uh, so you can have, finally, you can have two developers working on the same report pages. Uh, and uh, if, if they are just bringing visuals, new visuals, uh, it will be fine. There won't be any conflicts. So really, really excited about this. And let me show you a demo. And uh, okay, let me put the video. And I'll show the demo. And on purpose, I'm going to start from the service. Okay. And the reason why I want to start from the service is because I want to show that it's possible for you. And you must you must relax. You you can relax that. If you have an existing PBIP, you will be able to convert it to the new formats. You don't have, uh, uh, you don't need to do uh, start start over. So uh, I have a, a, a workspace, and I'm going to connect that workspace uh, to Git. And uh, so, and because of that, I get my PBIP, and I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm going to clone this repo into my local machine, so I get my PBIP with the model.bin and with the report.json, and uh, <coughs> I'm going to clone my uh, uh, to to my local folder. So uh, that's why I told you before that there are many ways for you to uh, go from Git to from DevOps into into your local folder. You can configure the remote, or you can do a clone, and then you get the folder already connected to the to DevOps. Uh, so as you can see, so I have my regular PBIP with a BIM and a JSON. Uh, I'm going to create a new branch to do that change, uh, following some best practices here. And now I will open uh, this report in and uh, and in, 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 in semantic model in Power BI uh, Desktop because I cloned. I need to refresh my my model because it doesn't have any data in source control. And now we are going to the to the to the preview features. And in here you will see two new preview features. One for the and two two new preview features under the PBIP preview feature. Uh, one for the semantic model that where you say, okay, I want to store my semantic model using Tyndall and another one for the reports. And when you say, when you enable this, uh, this uh, preview features, now, because if, if, if this was a new, if, if you were converting a PBIX to a PBIP, this won't happen. It will just save the PBIP with a new format. But, but because you are working in an, uh, you already have a PBIP and that PBIP already have uh, uh, a team soul, and also uh, uh, the model.bim and the report.json, when you save, we will prompt you to, to do an upgrade. And you can decide if you want to do an upgrade, or you can decide if you want to keep the current format. Why? Because we want to let you enable the new formats, but still open uh, previous reporters, reports that you have in production, and keep using the previous format until you are uh, you tested the, the new format. So you can enable the preview feature and you will get this prompt when you save only once. And if you choose keep current, we won't bother you again. And uh, only when you restart desktop, we will show you the prompt again for that file. So it's like a session uh, uh, configuration. But if you if you select upgrade, this will upgrade. You get a prompt for, for the semantic model and a prompt for the report. 
uh, <coughs> if you select upgrade, we will upgrade your PVIP automatically to use the new format. So as you can see, now on the report, instead of having uh, a report.json, you have a definition folder. And inside that definition folder, uh, you will get uh, those one visual, one file per visual uh, with a JSON representation of the report. And the same thing for the for the semantic model, you get a, a, full, a definition folder with a Tyndall representation of your semantic model. And uh, and uh, so I'm going to do a, a commit of this change. So I just did the conversion. As you can see, I, I deleted the model.bin. And now let's make some changes. So I'm going to make a measure change. And I'm going to make uh, some configuration, some visual, uh, some, some change in my visual configuration. And I'm saving. And now, instead of that ugly diff, I get a much better diff. Now, first, I get a, a, a granular diff. So I, only, I changed the, the, the measure, and the, and the measure was on the sales table. And I changed the visual. And instead of having the, the whole report changing, I'm only, I only get the change on that specific visual. <coughs> Sorry, and uh, when I click, I get a beautiful diff instead of that JSON diff that is far more difficult to understand. So I get the okay. This was the the in Tyndall. This was the change, uh, and uh, in the in the visual, um, this was the change, and I can understand. That, okay, the change was because I uh, uh, I changed uh, the the color. So I, I I can look into the JSON and understand what I'm uh, what I'm changing instead of uh, what's happening today, where you get that inline one line change that is really really hard to uh, to parse. And of course, when I commit those changes uh, and I synchronize this to DevOps, my uh, I'm just going to skip this. My Fabric Git integration will kick in uh, and it will. Also convert in the service to the to the new format, um, and uh, with this I will stop for questions. I know that I, I uh, uh, because otherwise I will just keep keep talking. Um, I will stop here for for if there are if there are any questions and before moving forward. Absolutely, Huey, and we do have quite a few. So, Pragati, would you like to kick us off? I think it's probably best if we change the view so everything can be a bit more yeah. Um, yeah. easily seen on screen. Yeah, I'm just thinking from which question should I start? <laughs> okay. Okay, um, okay I'll, I'll start with this question that comes from Dr. John, uh, and he's asking, what is the best way to separate the data set from the Power BI code? I know there are lots of options, but what is the best way to do it? Uh, let me see if I understood. The best way to separate the data set from the Power BI code, code, code or Power BI reports? So I would anticipate that this would be, and, and Dr. John, please feel free to, to elaborate on this slightly. Um, if we do want to continue to answer this now, then I would take this as the FIN report um, methodology, whereby yeah. potentially Dr. John has yeah. the data held within the report as well. Yeah. Uh, so let me go to the documentation to, to, to answer that question. OK. So <laughs> when you save as a, as a PVIP, you get as those two folders. If your PVIX also has a, a, a data set in it, if it doesn't, you will only get one folder, that is the report. And let's say if you have a live connect report, instead of having the data set, you will only get one folder. And inside that folder, there is a special file inside of the report folder called definition.pvir. And the definition for .pvir is a really important file of the PVIP. It basically holds the connection to the semantic model. And that connection can be two things. It can be a bypass. It's like just a, a local folder reference to the, to, the, to the folder side by side with the report. That, by the way, it can be on another location, but by default, it's side by side. Or it can be by connection. And if it is by connection, it will be a connection to a Power BI semantic model in the service. What this means, and, and to, to answer to that, how to convert between a thin to a, to a thick, uh, to, from a thick report to a thin report, 
you just need to change this file. Because if you are in a bypass, you are in a thick report because that's, you, are, you are connecting to a local data set. Now, if you go to this file and you change it to a by connection and then you select a, a, a report that exists in the service, you have a, a thin report. But I, I will take it a little bit further and I would say that by default, every report in the PBIP is a thin report because the report, it's, it's completely isolated from the data set and it, it holds a reference to the data set folder. And because of that, it's already a thin report. You can actually delete the, the, the data set and bring another data set and it will work with a new data set. You don't need to, you don't have the same problem that you have today with the PBIX where actually you need to make a change on that binary file to connect to another to another semantic model <clears throat> or to remove the queries to connect to a, to a semantic model in the service. So I would say that natively it's, al it's already a thin report, but if you want, um, if, if, you, if you just want to convert, you, want, you have a, you, you, can be, you can easily be in a situation where you have your PBIP, uh, but uh, for development, you want to work with a local data set, but when, just before you publish, you want to move to a thin report. You want to make sure that your report is going to be published into a semantic model in the service, but you don't want to publish the, 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 the data set part. So what you can do is on development, you have the, PB, the PBIR connecting to a bypass and just before committing, making the commit that will move into a, um, to, the, to the service, you just swap the file into a by connection and that's it. I hope that I... I was able to answer the question. I'm not sure. Yeah, but, uh... thanks. Thanks for that uh, description. We and and yeah, John, let us know if that answers your question, and if not, definitely add your comment. Excellent. Thank you. Um, we do have a few more questions coming in. Here, let me just take a quick look through. Um, okay. By the way, how, how much time do we have? So we have 10 minutes left currently. If we take two more questions and then we, we close the rest, we currently have around 15. So we're not going to go if through you want, them. This I'm moment. happy, maybe we, 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 can, uh, we can use the rest of the time just to, to answer a few questions. Um, or I can continue and, uh, and do a, another demo of uh, maybe the, the API deployments. But, uh, uh, okay. I'm, but I'm happy to, to, to stop here and just uh, answer the questions if there are plenty of those. If Excellent. Think I think that'll probably be beneficial and um, for our audience, and, and and then ultimately we can always potentially have another session in the future as well. So yeah. Okay. Sure. So let's take a look at uh, this one comes in from Alibaba. Is there any way uh, that DevOps auto refresh the data set after the report is published to the website? It's all sorry to the workspace. Yeah, this is this is something that definitely we have it on the backlog. Um, and uh, and uh, to, I would say we have it on the black backlog to to do it completely aut automatic. So basically on fabricate integration, whenever you do an update on the on the model, it will kick in the refresh. Um, it, it, this this has some um, some problems that need to be defined because you might be in a situation where sometimes you want to refresh, sometimes you don't want to refresh. Uh, maybe um, it could be a solution where you have some file that you can configure those rules. Uh, if you feel strongly about this, so please, please fill an idea, put the details of the of the things that you are missing, uh, and and share it with me. I'm, I'm, I can definitely uh, uh, this will this will raise the raise the odds of something like this to happen uh, sooner run, rather than later, but. On, you do have a workaround. And the workaround is actually simple because you do have APIs to refresh the semantic models. Actually, you have a, a very good API, which is the Enhanced Refresh API, where you can refresh a full model, you can refresh a, a, a partition, you can refresh a table, you can refresh the incremental refresh <coughs> policy if you want. So you have that API. So what you can do, if you have a DevOps environment, uh, you can... Uh, trigger the the you can deploy the PBIP on your own if you want, or you can trigger the Git deployment, and then you can use the API to refresh the the the, the semantic model. 
just as a, a subsequent action to your um, to your deployments. And by the way, uh, one of the examples that I have here actually does that. So um, uh, in here, uh, the, the deployment pipeline running in DevOps that will trigger the Fabric deployment pipeline, which is a different thing. So same name, but different different things. So Fabric deployment pipeline, it's it's something that runs in Fabric. And then the deployment pipeline deploys, make sure that the, the, the deployment, let's say from dev to test happens, it waits for that. And in the end, it will, it, 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 it uses another, uh, <coughs> another community um, DevOps action to refresh the, the data set. So you do have some workarounds. If you have APIs, uh, so you can track the deployment and after the deployment, you can refresh the, the semantic model. But something like completely out of the box uh, where you use fabricate integration that after the deployment it will kick in the refresh it's on the backlog it doesn't have uh, enough priority so far if you do feel strongly about it uh, i encourage you to just raise your voice create an, an idea if it doesn't exist vote for it um, i do agree that it that it is something um, uh, useful to have Excellent. Thank you very much, Huey. And um, Pragati, would you like to take the next question? Yeah. So let me take, um, OK. Uh, so this question comes from Oliver Rochia. Um, so the question is, are Power Query objects also editable in PBIP project files? Oh, oh yeah, um, for sure. So uh, and, and, and I'll show it the, the team doll version, which is much better. So uh, when you save as a PVIP and when you save it as Tindall, this is what you get. Uh, let me open it in VS Code. And uh, for each table, so let's open this uh, customer table. So I have my uh, customer.tindall and I have my Tindall representation of the, of the model. And uh, on the bottom, <laughs> you have uh, your uh, partitions. And, uh, and uh, inside the partition, you have the Power Query expression. So you can make, uh, you can actually open this, you can make changes, uh, open desktop again, and you will see those changes reflected in the um, in, in Power BI desktop. Uh, uh, and uh, at the moment, so I'm using that uh, Tindall uh, language extension I was talking about. At the moment, you don't get IntelliSense, but we do want to have IntelliSense in here as well. So we want to let you open the Tindall in VS Code and make changes to the Power Query expressions and get full IntelliSense there. So not yet there, but uh, we will get there um, in the future. But uh, but making changes and viewing view the the Power Query expression is definitely supported today. Um, in Tindall, the experience is uh, is uh, a lot better. Uh, so by the way, just to show you the same thing in Tindall. So in Timsol, so today without Timdol, uh, you ha you have that model dot bim, and uh, and if you want to see or make changes to the Power Query expressions, uh, it's 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 going to also be on the partitions uh, partitions uh, uh, property, and uh, and in here you have the expression, and this is the Power Query. But as you as you can see in Timsol, it's a lot harder to make changes because you need to worry about this new line escaping that is required because of the tracing. Thanks. Thanks, Uri. I think that makes sense. Thank you. Uh, I think, Leon, we can take just one more question. Yeah, very interesting. Um, OK, we do have a lot of questions still coming in, I suppose. One of the ones we should probably take, who is is just to get a steer on, on, on this question. Um, so this question again comes in for Dr. For Dr. John T. Um, what is the future of SQL BIs? Um, I wouldn't say that the SQL the tabular editor is, is SQL BIs, but what is the future of tabular editor now? Okay, yeah, <laughs> that's that's a, that's a good question. I would say that the future is bright because one of the things that we are doing with uh, with the PVIP is exposing the model. And one thing that I mentioned in the beginning, and it was not innocent, is that we, because we save as a PBIP and we expose the metadata, 
we also need to do a lot more hardening, what we call hardening internally. That is basically be okay with external tools to make changes to those files. So this means that this also opens uh, the possibilities of tools like Tableau Editor. Actually, uh, I think yesterday uh, I, I caught, uh, uh, or uh, actually last week, there was a, a very good article by the Tableau Editor team showing that now Tableau Editor saves as a PBIP and they actually provide a way for you, uh, even new functionality like selecting a, a semantic model in the service and saving as a PBIP and be able to open it in desktop. That's something that was not possible uh, today if you make changes with XMLA. Uh, so I would say that the future is bright because this also opens the possibilities of tools like Tableau Editor. Now, our strategy with the developer mode is basically to not force customers to use Tableau Editor to get basic functionality like source control. But there are the, 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 the pace of innovation that tools like Tableau Editor can bring because it's, a, an, it's an isolated tool, it's going to be faster so they can actually build and, and, and bring uh, uh, new features, uh, very interesting features into, into, into the platform. And now in an even more supported way than before. So that's, I think that the future is bright for external tools. And if you think on the report that right now we are going to, for the first time, expose the report as a publicly documented format, uh, I dare to say that the next big wave of tools will be about the reports because right now they you ha they have a format that they the external tools can work with can make changes so in a supportive manner Excellent. Thank you, Hui, for that answer. Very, very insightful there. Um, I think it's going to have to be our last uh, question due to time, unfortunately, um, this evening. We do have a lot more stacked up, which means, at least from my point of view, Hui, that, the, that there's a lot more to discuss on this topic. And obviously, as we weren't able to get to the end of your presentation, there's also a lot more to, to display as well. I think we need him back. <laughs> Tomorrow. <laughs> Let's schedule that. <laughs> Excellent. And do you want to go into any any final slides at all, Hui? We have um, let the community know where they can find you. Um, is there any additional documentation you'd like to share at all? No. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you for asking. So I would say that you can learn more about developer mode and Git integration on this slide. So one of the things that I I, I always try because it's it's a it's a good way to scale is to bring uh, um, a new stuff into into our documentation into the blog. So, for example, I I highly encourage you uh, everyone to look into this article. Uh, let me try to open it. It's in here, uh, which is the Azure DevOps build pipelines. It's an example on how to uh, uh, how you can implement a continuous integration pipeline by basically just copy and pasting a YAML code into a DevOps and it will start validating and trouble and uh, and um, and uh, do some quality assessment on your uh, on your models. It's using two amazing uh, tools, the one uh, an amazing tablet editor with best practice rules and another one that is created by a colleague uh, from Microsoft, Nat Van Gogh, PBI inspector that does the same thing of the best practice analyzer but over the report, uh, it's really, really amazing tool. Uh, thank you, Nat, for, for creating it. Uh, but, and uh, what, what I mean is, in here is the place where, on in this documentation, where we are, we are constantly bringing uh, all, the, all the updates about, uh, about developer mode. And, um, and, uh, and now as, as we ship in, though, it's going to be also um, uh, in essence, uh, other than that, you can reach me on team. You can find me uh, uh, mostly on LinkedIn or uh, or Twitter. Uh, I'm more active on LinkedIn. Um, I'm happy to to support you there. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much again Hui, for that session. Um, it's amazing. Like I say, we said to you before um, before we went live today that thank you for all the work that you're doing um, internally um, to deliver this product to, to, what, to what the community are calling out for. 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I I mean, it, it was an amazing session. I mean, I think I learned a lot. I think I, I might just go and dig more into <laughs> Power BI project files now. And thank you. Thank you so much for taking out time to do that for us. Thank you. It was really good to, to be here and uh, see you next time. Excellent. Definitely. Okay, Pragati, let's go ahead and close the session. So we'd like to thank you all um, once again for starting the year with us at the Microsoft Fabric UK user group. As always, you could have been anywhere in the world, but you've been here with us. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day and great evening. Bye.